So as I said a lot on this channel, trading is certainly an evolution. You get better step by step, you learn things as you go along, you get better with experience. Now it took me two and a half years to lock down a strategy and to lock down my entry criteria in terms of my trading time frame. However, I was still losing a bit more trades than I would have liked to. So I was going through my trades, racking my brain, trying to figure out why are some trades better than the other? How can I still improve my strategy to get it to where I wanna be, where I lose a little less trade? So I wanted to be in a position where I won a bit more trades. It was better for my psychology. I like winning more trades as everybody does in order to get my ROI at the end of the year a little bit better. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to improve our own trading strategy. We don't care about anybody else. Who cares what this person is doing or this person online is doing? All that matters is you. You're only trying to improve yourself. Remember that it's so key. Always try to beat you. It'll help you massively in your journey. And there was one major thing that I noticed between the winning trades and a lot of losing trades, and that was higher time frame confluence. Now for me as a swing trader, I mainly place trades on the four hour chart, but I do have an intraday strategy, a breakout retest that I uh, execute trades on a 30 minute or one hour. However, I found a pattern between the trades that really went well and those trades that possibly stopped me out quickly or didn't move very far. And that was simply down to higher time frame confluence. I do think it's one of the strengths of my personal trading is that I know quite well now how to evaluate a trade that should be taken or shouldn't be taken based on these higher time frames. Now, I don't think it's anything that's gonna massively flip your trading around from unprofitable to profitable, but it certainly will help you get a little bit better as you go on by mastering this higher time frame confluence. Now, obviously we're gonna be taking trades that run and run and run that get us more and more profit, i.e. more and more money. And the main thing that I use to decipher whether trades can potentially run and run is obviously the higher time frame confluence. I use the concept of RTM, which is ready to move. I talk about it on my streams every single day. Is this currency pair RTM? Is it ready to move? Is there a potential for this to move quite far for me to capture lots and lots of profit? Now my edge, as well as a lot of people's edges, comes from trades that really run and run and run because they massively affect your ROI at the end of the year. One trade can take away five or six. I had a month last month or two months ago Ago, I think where I lost five trades. I took one trade for EU and I ended up being 5% up on the month. So these big trades obviously make a massive difference in your ROI at the end of the year, which ultimately leads to more percentage gain and then your monetary benefits because of that. Now this video is probably a bit more geared towards intraday traders or swing traders, those who are taking trades on the 30 minute plus time frames. You can use higher time frame confluence in your smaller time frame charts. However, because I don't look at the 30 minute or 15 minute as my higher time frame, I wouldn't want to say with confidence that these exact methods would work for you if you are a scalper or somebody who executes trade on the smaller time frames. Right, so let's get into the charts and I'll show you exactly what I mean. Before we do that, Remember, if you haven't liked the video and you do like this concept, smash that like button. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. It helps me grow the channel. Right now, before we get into anything, let's just explain what higher time frame confluence is for you newer traders out there, as you may not know. Now, the normal way that I was personally taught, and I think a lot of people taught, is that you've got your trading time frame, which may be, for example, let's say the 30 minute, the 15 minute, or the one hour. Higher time frame confluence, we should always be looking at these two time frames above. So if we trade the 30 minute, which is my one of my favorite charts, for my higher time frames, I'll be looking at the one hour and the four hour. Again, if I'm looking at the four hour chart, two time frames above, I'll be looking at the daily and the weekly for my higher time frame confluence. Now, as I said, if you trade the one minute chart, yes, you can look at the five minute and the 15, that is still technically fine, but I'm not gonna talk too much about that in this video because I like to have the data to back up and I don't trade these time frames, even though I think the concepts um, do relay into uh, every time frame, I don't think it's right for me to talk about it and I won't. So I'm gonna specifically talking about 30 minute plus. Now, I know you can say, well, Ryan, if you're doing the 30 minute, why are you looking at the four hour and daily? Shouldn't you be looking at the one hour, four hour? For me, on my personal charts, um, as you can see here, I've got the 30 minute uh, up here. I've got the one hour here, the four hour here, and the daily here. So even though if I'm trading off something off the 30, I still like to look at this daily. But from a theory perspective, a theoretical perspective of trading, they do say two time frames above look for your higher time frame confluence. And what we're essentially saying with higher time frame confluence is we're looking to make sure these higher time frames, whether it be the four hour and daily, are still looking nice for the direction of your trade, i.e 
do these time frames look nice uh, compared to your trading time frame so what we're essentially wanting and what we're talking about with rtm ready to move is we're looking to get involved in trades whether it be on smaller time frames at the right time so for example if a market is on an uptrend we're making higher highs dow theory higher highs higher lows and we see a pullback right and this is let's say on the daily chart if we are getting a setup on the 30 minute or one hour right uh, let's say for me for example it's a cup with handle breakout retest right and i'm seeing an entry in here and i see the fact that we're making higher highs on a daily or four hour time frame uh, i.e our dow theory uptrend we're potentially getting volume coming in at the bottom of this pullback possibly a catalyst on the daily from a candle perspective such as a hammer candle uh, an evening star very simple candle patterns that potentially say that this pullback is coming to an end that for me would be a good time to enter on this trade because we have confluence with our four hour daily time frame saying that Dow theory we're on uptrend, we're potentially coming to the end of a pullback, we're getting volume coming in, we potentially got a hammer bar or an engulfing candle, something down here at the bottom of a pullback. It could coincide with a 50% uh, Fibonacci level pullback. All these things add up to, again, that confluence that this could be a trade that potentially has another leg to the upside. So for example, if we have a daily perspective here, and this is where we're looking to take a trade on the 30 minute or one hour time frame, okay? There is the potential for this market, remember it's coming from an uptrend, to have another leg like this to the upside. So if we think our, about our risk reward on smaller time frames, right? Whether it be a 20 pip stop or 30, obviously that's dependent on the currency pair, right? And this moves, I have another leg like this to the upside, you gotta think about the potential of that in terms of your profits. So we're getting involved at a good time, and this is so key. What we definitely don't wanna be doing is buying up here. You know, we don't be buying up here, potentially buying when the daily or four hour looks a little bit climactic, because that's often when we see fake outs, that's often when we see losing trades. So this is where patience comes in, because there's a lot of trades and a lot of context and setups that I get on the 30 minute or one hour that I simply do not take because the daily or the four hour are not ready to move. They're potentially too extended. And I'm not massively confident in the ability of that pair to move a long way. Now I'll give you a great example of this. I just closed a trade today on Euro pound, a trade that actually moved me up to 40,000 on my stock net account here. Uh, I started this account from 10K. I'm actually doing a separate series on the stock net road to 1 million. You can watch that on my channel. Anyway, Euro pound. So we go to the Euro pound chart. This was a four hour aggressive entry for me. So I took the trade on this particular bar up here and obviously the movement has been great. Now, if we look at from a four hour perspective, okay, this is our trading time frame. What we wanna be doing is looking at the daily and the weekly. Now, when I took this trade, notice where we were on the daily chart. We were roughly around this area. Now, these are all very simple things. It's very simple price action, right? For me, I was looking at impulse corrective and potential continuation impulse. So we had our impulse, tag the Cree level, uh, pullback. We had this bar here on this 20 period MA, rejection bar to the upside. So I'm looking at that. Remember, we can't see what happens in the future, but I'm looking at this thinking, well, if this is impulse corrective impulse, I could really make some money on this impulse leg from a daily perspective. And that's exactly what happened. Not only have we had that, we've also got our head and shoulders here on the daily chart. Right, so very simple things, very simple market structure um, gives me confidence with that trade. But we're just looking at that impulse corrective, rejection to the upside. We had a little bit of volume coming in on that rejection here. So a little bit of volume coming in, which I normally like to see at the end of pullbacks. So I'm thinking, well, if you move to the downside, this will be good for my trade. And uh, I ended up taking that. Now, obviously, we have to go back to the weekly as well. So the weekly chart, we had this movement to the upside. So the weekly chart, we had this movement to the upside. And then we, again, we had this rejection here. We had this outside bullish engulfer from a weekly perspective, looking that maybe this move to the upside is not going to sustain in Euro pound. We know the Euro, or personally know the Euro, likes these climactic fakes where it pushes on and it completely fakes out. So although we're taking recent price action here, again, it still gives me a little bit of confidence on my short idea for that Euro pound trade. Oh, 
Now, we've kind of looked a little bit at how higher time frame confidence can help you with your winning trades, but let's look at how it can help you avoid losing ones. So I use this 20 period MA as a kind of visual guide, right? Because normally when I see pairs that are massively extended away from this 20, i.e. there's a massive gap between price action and this 20 period, I have a little bit of worry because price does like to correct roundabout back to that 20 before it continues on. Not all the time, but quite a lot of the time. So this 20 MA or the golden 20, as I like to call it, because it really was such a big changer in my trading career using a simple 20 period moving average can really help with your higher time frames. So if you look at Euro Aussie, for example, at this period back here, this is a daily chart. So when we see price action get down to the bottom here, where it's a little bit climactic, right? This is unsustainable price action. When you see price action moving like this, right? Like this, it's called climactic price action. And normally this doesn't sustain. Now, if I got a potential setup, let's say somewhere down here, I wouldn't be taking that trade. If it came on the 30 minute or one hour, let's say it's a cup with handle, head and shoulders, breakout retest that I like, I wouldn't be taking that trade. For me, that move would be almost already done or already done. There'd be too many question marks on whether this move sustained to the downside because of this climactic price action and because of the gap we have between price action and this 20 period moving average. It's a massive gap. We don't want this. You know, we want to be taking trades here on a pullback rather than potentially getting involved at the end of that trend. And another good way to look at it is if you're looking at placing a trade somewhere down here. Do you think price action is going to do the same again, right? We've had this move over probably a two week period. Do we think that this is going to happen again? I don't think maybe on a rare occasion, but more often than not, it's going to need a pullback before it goes another leg. So again, you go back to that concept of RTM ready to move. Is this at this point in time, is Euro Aussie ready to move? I would say no. I would say it's ready for a pullback. So avoiding these trades that's somewhere down here will save you a lot of losing trades. Now, another important thing to know if you are trading smaller timeframes is when you get these decent moves to the downside, this is a pound Swiss daily chart. What you often see when we've had this leg and we're looking like we're potentially pulling back, let's say, for example, we don't see all this price action here. Okay, this is where patience comes in, right? Because if you think about the 70 or thir the 70 30 rule, which means market trend 30% of the time and range or pullback 70% of the time. Okay, so we've had a very good move to the downside. For me, looking at this chart, I wouldn't be interested in it for probably around two weeks because we've got to let this move digest. So the golden 20 is there. So if I move all this away, you can see that price action has moved back to this 20. However, if we remove this, me looking at it, looking at how this price is digested, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days of pullback price action to digest this. It's just not enough. And maybe that comes with a little bit of experience, but this price action here is not enough to, to digest this big move. And this is where another thing comes in of the ABC, a concept of the ABC, where you could get a pullback that potentially looks like this before moving to the downside. But I'll cover that in another video. Now, that's a very important point and something that you've got to go ahead and look at and do some research yourself into how these moves get digested and how long they normally take to be digested. Now, the point about the digestion is very important because as we come to the end here, and let's look at this particular bar here. If you are trading smaller time frames, and you're saying to yourself, well, pound Swiss is on a downtrend. I'm looking to get involved in a short in this. For me, obviously, what we should know now is, is the move has probably already been done. Okay, we've had a decent move to the downside. I definitely do not want to sell down here, right? I want to be selling here. I want to be selling here, here. Well, the move's just happening, not at the end, right? We don't be getting FOMO and selling at the end. That is normally where fake outs happen. So from a daily perspective, we've come down here. Small time frame traders might be saying, well, I'm going to go with the momentum of this and short pound Swiss. So what you often see is fake outs. So if you notice on this particular bar here, this hammer bar, look, we've slightly broken the lows here. That for me is a stereotypical fake out. So we've probably got retail going short here when they shouldn't be going short because the move has already happened. So even if you're trading a 15 minute time frame, 30 minute time frame, and you see your daily that looks like this, Avoid it. Yes, there's some instances where it might go, but I think more often than not, you'll be caught out in stop punts.
right? And you see it come up, probably taking a lot of retail out, um, and you know how star punts go, essentially. So the whole thing comes down to a few different concepts. One, we don't want to be buying at the top, and we will not be selling at the bottom, right? BTSB, just made that up in the spot. Uh, we want to make sure the 20 period is close by or a 21 EMA, some kind of middle of the range moving average that you can use as a visual guide to make sure, again, you're not buying at the top and selling at the bottom. Three, what we can also use is volume. If we're looking particularly at potentially getting on pullbacks, you can use volume. We can lose candlestick patterns, i.e. very simple ones in golfers, hammers, morning or evening star. Uh, certain other patterns that you can use that potentially indicate where momentum is moving to the upside. Again, with your dailies, you can look at break of structure saying, okay, this looks quite good down here, potentially at the start of the move. We just don't want to be buying here at the top of the moves and obviously selling at the bottom. I'm going to repeat this because that is the most important thing, right? We can also use fibs. So again, from a, a daily perspective, even if you're trading on a 30 minute, one hour, if we're looking at pullback entries, again, from an uptrend, let's say this is coming from an uptrend, um, and this is, you're, you're hitting your 40, 60 box, which is the 38.2 to the 61.8, and you're somewhere in here, right? And this is specifically talking about pullback entries, right? You're getting volume coming in. You potentially got your hammer here. You're within that 40, 60 box, and your setup is coming on the 30 minute, one hour chart. Perfect, right? Everything is lining up. That is great. If we also have something potentially from a breakout of a zone from a daily perspective, let's say you've got uh, a view reversal or price action moving in and you're looking to get involved around here. So daily perspective on a break, great, perfect. 30 minute, one hour setup, good market structure. The 20 period is probably close by, great. What we obviously don't wanna be doing is getting involved up here. So make sure uh, we're looking at you. You're using that 21. You're using that 20. You're looking at a daily, potentially weekly, if you're trading four hour. And don't get involved in these massive gaps because that's where you can get stopped out. So higher time frame confluence. Uh, hopefully that video helped. Hopefully you understand it a little bit more. And it is so key. And the last point I'll say, and maybe even the most important point, is in order to master your higher time frame confluence, this is where patience comes in. Because if you've got a setup down here and you're looking to sell the pound Swiss, right? We can't take that, or I wouldn't take that. Considering the move of this, as I said, you've got to have the patience to wait maybe two weeks or so for this move to be digested before you potentially get involved in other shorts. For example, if we look at crypto here, this was a recent example. We had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days of movement to the downside. Look how much we've had to digest this. Potentially, we're doing the same thing. I don't know what's going to happen in the future with crypto. This is actually getting a little bit longer than I would have thought for continuation down. However, essentially what I'm saying is very few days to, to move, a lot of days of consolidation. Now, look within this consolidation or what we can call the secondary trend within a primary trend. So if you know Dow theory, there's a primary trend, secondary trend, tertiary trend. This is a secondary trend from our primary trend. Tertiary trend is moving within this secondary trend. Notice how many fake outs we get within this, this uh, secondary trend, quite a lot. So I think how much retail, because they're expecting this to move to the downside, let's say, for example, if the trend is down, are getting involved in, in traps or trap retail longs here because this pair is not digested and ready to move. So different characteristics for different pairs. You know, Bitcoin may need a little bit more digestion compared to, to Forex and indices. Something you guys need to go and figure out on what the particular characteristics of your market likes. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, hit the like button. If you want to know more information or maybe I, there's parts where I didn't explain it properly, that could very well happen. Sometimes I go off into a tangent. Let me know down in the comments. If you're confused or anything, uh, let me know down in the comments. I'll try to answer as much as possible. If you do like the video, make sure you hit the like. Uh, if you want to learn a little bit more from me about trading, see what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis, hit that link down below. You get seven days free at Simplicity Trading. All right, guys, have a lovely day, and always remember to trade safe. Peace.